much in the body of Christ. Amen. It ain't, it ain't all about what you're capable of doing. Just flow with God. That's right. And when you just flow with God, God will flow with you. Amen. If you would just prophesy over yourself on tonight and say, I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. Oh, y'all ain't say that thing like you really mean it. I, I dare you to just really speak over yourself and just begin to speak over your life on tonight and tell them, say, baby, I'm a game changer. You, you don't understand. Some things are about to shift and it's all because of me. So some laws and legislations are about to be changed and it's all because of me. Why? Because I am who I am in God. Y'all ain't going to help me in here on So let's look at what was happening here. The Bible talks about these daughters. Amen. And when you begin to look at the names of Lofa had, it means protection from fear, which means they ain't afraid of nothing. Look to your neighbor and tell them, say, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Do I have any people on the building? Do I have any women in the house on tonight that are determined and they're daring on tonight? Do I have any daughters in here who can say, I am who I am in God? And so as believers, sometimes the mindset that we take on is that when we automatically get saved, that blessings are supposed to just come for us. And they're supposed yeah. to come without any trials or without any tribulations. Sometimes you got to understand that, that some blessings are not going to be released without a fight. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Some things ain't going to be released without a struggle. Some things ain't going to be released without a painful walk in a trial in a tribulation. So, so you wondering why everything is going crazy and haywire in your life. You wondering why people talk. Even in the midst of what we're going through, it takes the fear and effectual prayers of an upright heart to begin to cry out to God for a breakthrough or a change. And then other times it requires that we just begin to step out on our faith. See, I don't want to preach tonight. I just want to talk to you. Because I think what we've done, woman of God, is we've done enough entertainment in the body of Christ. And so we do the hooping, we do the hollering, and we do the jumping, and we do the shouting. And when you leave out of the house of God, you still ain't got no substance. You still don't know how to apply the word of God to your situation. You still have not allowed your mind to be transformed and renewed in this it's not about clicks. It's not about friendship. It's about who's anointed to carry the oil. I follow the oil and y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And it's, how, it's not about my favorite preacher. It's not about my favorite televangelist, but it's about where the oil is. Where is the So, other times, it may require that you step out of your comfort zone and, and you're waiting for a move of God on our behalf. And so, sometimes we might have to confront the wrong people, uh -huh. the wrong things, the wrong situations in order to make some things right. Now you got to look at what was happening here. You have these daughters and they have been mentioned in the previous chapter. And the word of God says that now had come time for Moses to take a census of those who had survived the wilderness. Tell somebody, say, I survived. I survived. Well, what did you survive? Well, I survived when doctors said that I wasn't going to make it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I survived when they told me that I wasn't going to be nothing. I survived when I lost everything and I should have lost my mind, but I could have lost my mind, but because of the grace of God, I'm still standing. I survived when I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to praise. I didn't want to worship. And yet I pushed my way through. I was in the wilderness and nobody even knew where I was. There were times when I had to go to church and the The old generation had died and they were about to enter into the land of promise. God had promised them Canaan. Now you gotta understand there's a difference between inheriting something and possessing something. Because watch this, when I inherit something, that means that it has been passed down to me. I really don't have to earn it. I really don't have to, I don't really deserve 
me, but it's mine because I'm in the right bloodline. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And so when you possess something, that means ain't nobody got to give you nothing. It's already yours for the taking. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And so you gotta understand that when the children of Israel were, God had already promised them possession of the land. It was already theirs. They didn't have to work too hard for it. They weren't gonna have to move out the enemy. Come on here. Sometimes you're gonna have to go into some situations where God that they were doing the census and they had to determine how the land should be divided. And you got to remember in that day and time, the women had no particular place. The women had no particular status. My God. So the women going to the men and telling their story, that was out of order at that particular time. It was considered a no-no. That was just unheard of. But when they began to bring their case before God, it was something that had never been addressed before. Can I have three people in the house on tonight say, God getting ready to do something for me that he ain't never done before. He, he getting ready to shift some things for me that ain't never happened before. Do you, you understand that we are in a time now, we are in a dimension now, where God is getting ready to do something in the church that ain't never been done before. That means he liable to bring a drug at it or a prostitute off the street. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And that might be where your word is. What you looking for in the apostle, the prophet, or the evangelist, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. He's getting ready to shake up the church and the foundation of the church. And while we thinking that everything is determined upon the membership and, and who's got the greatest calling, listen, 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 listen. We are in an hour now, an hour now. where God is doing something so phenomenal yes, yes. that if you are not in tune with the heart and the mind of God, you're gonna miss it. Because how you are Frame, 
these women had to be strategic with how they moved and approached these men. They had to use wisdom. You know what I find so sad in the body of Christ? Is that we have no wisdom. We have no strategy. You have to, we are in an hour where now you gotta move strategically. Listen, people been asking me, say, prophets, why you not doing a whole lot? Why you not traveling a lot? Why you not posting on Facebook? Because listen, we in a strategic hour. Listen, you don't see an assassin coming until the assassin done took you out. You don't see a hitman coming until, listen, listen, in the government they have what they call the Navy SEALs. Then you have another form of governmental tactic teams that you call the CIA. Then you got the FBI, which is a part of the federal government. And depending on what level you are operating in, that's how you take down the victim. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And so in this hour, God say, I'm calling in some CIA agents in the body of Christ. Somebody that ain't gonna look like what they've been through. Somebody that you ain't gonna be able to identify easily. And so they ain't gonna walk around in a two-piece suit and a long dress all the time. Sometimes they gonna look like the whore out on the corner. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Sometimes they gonna look like the drug boy out on the corner. But you gotta have an ear to hear and an eye to see. We about to change the game. Watch this. They didn't love the present. They didn't live there. But they knew what they had coming to them. And so we're in an hour what now where you can't look at your situation because it ain't always what it look like. Right. Amen. Amen. It ain't always what it appear to be. Right. Sometimes God will just test you to see, are you willing to keep going? Are you still willing to keep pressing? There have been some times in my life, baby, I wanted to throw in the towel. And listen, church folk would make you never want to preach again in life. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Church folk would make you just say, God, I don't even want to do this no more. I don't even want to go here no more. Listen, you got to get Y'all ain't gonna be real about it. Maybe they just do that too long. There have been some times in my life where I've had to cry all night long and just say, God, you got to really work on me. Because if you don't work on me, God, I ain't gonna survive this thing. And see, we gotta understand in our mindset, we gotta understand in our heart that when you are a game changer, when you are our shop, our Messiah, when you are innovative and creative, you got to understand that everything that come normal to somebody. in the body of Christ, you're going to have to move a little differently. And so, you got to understand that at this point, Israel hadn't even gotten out of the wilderness yet. They hadn't even left the wilderness yet. And already these girls come in and say, listen, we ain't going to just let you just take what's ours. You ain't going to give us, you, you're going to give us our father's inheritance. You got to understand that they hadn't taken possession but they were making the necessary preparations. Why? Because God had told him, do a census of the people, divide the land, find out how it's going to need to be divided, how many ways, how many territories, how many tribes, blah, 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 blah. And so they were making the necessary possessions. Right. You got to be crazy and out of your mind to be walking in faith. Yes. And you don't even know how God going to move for you, yeah. but yet you, t listen, Come on. Go there. people thought I had to lost my mind when I moved to California, woman of God. Right. Because listen, here's the I didn't know what God was doing. I didn't know how God was doing it. All I knew was that I was just trusting God. And I knew it would be for a season, but I didn't know how the season would end. And so the worst thing in the world as a leader is when you depend on your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And you go to them and you say, hey, I need somebody that can pray for me. But by the time you hang up the phone, good, the same person that you done asked to pray for you is the same person that's trying to go shot put you under the bus that they've talked about you. Come on here. They desire to see you fail. Why? Because they already know you're a game changer. Yeah. Sometimes what happened was the first thing they did was clear their father's name. Listen, my dad ain't have nothing to do with that rebellion in the wilderness. All right. He died, but he died of his own sin. He had nothing to do with that. So he did not forfeit his part of the territory. So they had to clear his name. They made sure that they know that their father had not forfeited.
inherited his portion of the land. And then they specified, they said, listen, we ain't got no males in our bloodline left to plead our case. Listen, it's a beautiful thing when God will plead your case for you. It's a beautiful thing when you know what the law says and what the law does. But then God steps in and shifts the law just when you know God. Do I have We don't got no males to plead our case. But what I love about Moses is that Moses listened. Yes. And he listened with compassion. Yes. And then instead of him just beginning to answer out of his own wisdom and out of his flesh, he took it before the Lord. Yes. And in the process of him taking it before the Lord, the Bible says that God begins to tell Moses, he said, listen, they right. He said, listen, the women, you got to understand, for them to be able to stand boldly and go before these men, knowing the consequences, they apparently knew that they were connected to the right power source. And so they automatically knew that if they trusted in their God, that something would shift in their behalf. They didn't just change the game for them, but they changed the game for everybody around y'all. Ain't going to get that. Y'all missed that right there. See, you're not just changing the game for you, but you're changing the game. Well, see, when I walk in the obedience of God, I'm not just changing the game for me, but I'm changing it for my sons, and I'm changing it for their sons, and their sons, and the generations behind me. So you got to understand that when you begin to be a game changer, it's not just you that's going to be affected, but it's the people around you, the people that you are connected to, the people that you are predestined to encounter. It's a game change. Because they know and understand that if they're like the 
asylum is in the body of Christ. The money gonna find them. It was because of what Solomon had on the inside of him that the Queen of Sheba said, load up the wagon, we gonna see this man. Listen, you gotta understand that what's in you in this hour has to be enough to bring the wealth to you, not you go to the wealth. You gotta understand that in the hour that we are in, God is saying, this is about to be a shift where the wealth of the wicked, people who have the Of inheritance. My God, my God. So that's powerful. He changed the structure so that it'll fit the women. Why? Because we are who we are in God. The baddest thing in the world that God could have created was a woman. Baby. Anytime you can take a man and make him disobey the decree of God, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. When God that gave him a law, when God that right to inheritance now the game has changed that that now you know the daughters have the first right over the male relatives that are after those who are not their brothers and their sisters can i preach it like i feel it on tonight when the men won't step up when the men don't want to come into order then what god will do is he'll raise up some women
Originally, in order to be in the priesthood, everything revolved around the males. You can be a female and be a part of the priesthood.